going on everybody? Mal here. How are you guys doing today? I took my time with this one. I, I know, I know I'm, so I'm, I'm actually not sorry because I needed to be sure that my findings from, you know, launch day were exactly correct. You know, that I wasn't missing the mark by any sort of margin before talking to you guys about it. And now, two and a half months later, I, I, I dig it, I get it. So let's talk about the OnePlus 6T. When I was thinking about the script for this video, as I do with all the videos on the channel, I laid down a couple of points that I wanted to go through. Those being the phone, the speed, the battery, the software, the camera, and the price. So six points in total. But when I actually sat down to record this part, like for the first time after I'd done all the B-roll and all that, I realized none of those things were what I actually considered interesting about the 6T in the first place. Not even the value proposition, which is absolutely insane. Because the 6T has been out for about three months and OnePlus as a company has been out for quite some time, pushing out you know, incredible phones that perform really well for very competitive prices, one after the other. And it's been a while. So we, the more you know, tech savvy YouTube searching kind of people that go down to the comment section that talk about technology with everybody else, we already know all that stuff. So that shouldn't come as a surprise for us because this is the 6D, it's an upgrade on the previous one. So it's obviously better. But that's the thing, even us, we, the more tax savvy people, we're still focusing on the wrong side of the discussion that that value proposition brings to the table in the first place. All right, now for this video to actually be helpful for everybody, let's just do a quick recap about the 6D in case you are one of those, you know, not too tech savvy people or you just want a refresher. Oh, and in case you are the former, welcome aboard, hope you enjoy and stick along for the ride. The phone is superbly built. Incredible design, it's gorgeous. Every single version of the 6D is beautiful. The finesse, the premiumness of the materials, the construction, everything is just, you know, right there. There's a level of polish here that you just have to give it to OnePlus. They're doing a fantastic job. Now, the list of don't haves of the 6C is actually quite minimal. It doesn't have wireless charging, even though it does have a glass back. For me, having a glass back doesn't equal to need to have wireless charging, but I'm not really a wireless charging kind of person. I use a Pixel 2 XL every day and no wireless charging here, pure metal. But in case you are team wireless charge everywhere with pads all over your place, don't be alarmed. There's good stuff here even for you. There is no headphone jack and uh, I'm not really that bothered by it because using the Pixel 2, which doesn't have a headphone jack, made me realize how little I actually sat down to use headphones with my smartphone. But at least they used the extra space to get you an in-display fingerprint sensor. And if you enroll your finger a couple of times, you are definitely not going to have the same problem. A bunch of people keep saying that it's not super accurate. It takes too long to actually it takes a bit too long. It's not fast but enroll your finger a couple of times and you're gonna have as much accuracy with it as you would with a normal phone. My Pixel 2 XL hits the mark about 95, 98% of the time. This 6T has been doing just the same. But the built-in dongle with the Equalizer app means that I can grab my beautiful 5ADX Jubilees, plug it in, kick back, relax, and listen to good music because it has power enough to drive them. And in case you'd like to see my review on the 5ADX Jubilees, you can check it out here. And uh, you really should, by the way, wink, wink. Now, battery life, absolutely no joke. You're probably gonna get the same thing that I'm getting, which is two days worth of battery life out of this thing in one charge. To be absolutely honest, I've been getting one full day plus 60 to 80% to the next day. And that's just because the sheer absurdity of the performance this thing brings got me to actually use it more and more and push it harder and further. Cause you just, 
you're not gonna need, you're not gonna feel that urge to set it aside, open up your laptop or fire up your computer to finish off whatever it is you were doing. You're just gonna keep going with your phone and your 6T is gonna do a freaking amazing job at that. And do not fret, cause death charging has got your back. That, that didn't rhyme, did it? No, I'm, I'm terrible at rhyming, but you really don't need to worry about running out of battery. And this is especially true for those of you who are, you know, accustomed to having wireless charging pads everywhere. Yeah, uh, 15 to 20 minutes plugged into the wall, and dash charging is gonna get you at least what's worth of a one full day of battery life. That is awesome. And that's ridiculous performance I mentioned, that has more to do with the software than the hardware, because the hardware of the 6T isn't that much different from basically every other flagship out there right now. But the software, whoo, that's where the absolutely incredible job of OnePlus with Oxygen OS comes through. Yes, Oxygen OS is just plain and simple, the best version of Android you can use. Just setting the bar for absolute best version of Android for sure. Forget stock Android, and I'm a stock Android user, and I would still slap Oxygen OS over the top of every single Android operating system I get my hands on if I had the chance, without even stopping for a second thought. Now to the camera. It is as good as you should ever expect a camera to be on a phone, like for today's standards at least. Is it the king of photos? Nope, that's still the pixels. Is it the king of video? Nope. Those kings are still the iPhones, but it's the runner up with the third phone on that list, which is the Note 9 in my opinion. The camera on the Note 9 was already excellent. And for me, the 6T is on par with that. And both of them are so close to what you would get on a Pixel or on an iPhone that any sort of tweaking that you end up doing, be it light editing or just slapping a filter to post to Instagram or stuff like that, that's basically going to get the difference between the quality of these cameras to be non-existent because it's going to remove any significant gaps. In the off case that you really just want the absolute best detail possible but you still want a 6T, just download the Pixel 3 camera app into the 6T and uh, be extremely happy with your choice. And by the way, on video I stand by to say the exact same thing. This entire video has been shot on the 6T. Now here goes the color grade and uh, time to bring the color grade back. And to top it off, OnePlus updates their software and keeps their phones running like fresh with that same out of the box feel for so long, so reliably and so consistently that honestly, these are the phones that I'd wager are probably going to be the ones still running smoothly, catering to all that you needed to do for the next one, maybe even two years to come. And I don't see any other Android manufacturers being able to claim anything like that. We are already seeing Pixel 3 users complaining of slowdowns, stuttering, lag. That's, that's already unacceptable. But when you see people using the OnePlus 5T more than a year old, still saying that it is smooth as butter as if you just took it out of the box, that's saying something. And OnePlus is committed to keep updating their stuff for at least two to three years to come. So unless you're the type of person that updates your phone every like six months or so, yeah, uh, this is a very big factor that you should take into consideration. The longevity and the reliability with which you'll be able to use your OnePlus 6T is not something you're gonna find everywhere else. After all, you know, software updates is something that other manufacturers have heard of, but like a whisper in the night, something that came out of a tale and became a legend that then turned into a myth. thirsty. All right, this wasn't exactly a quick recap, really, but ha, what the hell. Now, get all of that, all the good points, the bad points, everything that we just discussed, and throw in this extra piece of information. All my experience with the OnePlus 6T came out of using the base model, entry-level OnePlus 6T, for 550 bucks, with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I know, before you say anything, I'm aware 550 bucks is not like pocket change, it's not something you throw away. OnePlus hasn't been selling, you know, budget phones for quite a while, but this is squarely in the mid-level tier of pricing. But the phone itself? This is a flagship phone, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. The OnePlus 6T is a flagship competing for mid-level prices. 
And that is a value proposition that you just cannot ignore. Especially when you consider everything on that list and you realize the OnePlus 6T is not only capable of that, but in real life scenarios, in real world usage, it wipes the floor with basically all the competitors you throw against it. Especially, especially when you remember that it is doing that for three, five, seven hundred dollars less than said competitors. The most expensive version of the 6T is the McLaren Special Edition. It comes with 256 gigs of storage, orange accents, carbon fiber finish, and 10 gigs of RAM. Uh, and warp charging, which is even faster than dash charging, and we're approaching the irresponsible here, guys, so come on. But that's an amazing phone. 700 bucks, not cheap. But if you look at the competition, do you want to get a Pixel 3 XL with 256 gigs of storage? Well, you can't, because it only goes up to 128. Now that it is discounted, you would need $860. The Note 9, discounted, 128 gigs, $900. And that's on Android. Hop the fence to the iPhone side of the table, and to get an iPhone XS Max with 256 gigs of storage, you're gonna pay $1,249. No, no! I'm sorry to all you Apple fans and Samsung fans and Google fans, and do remember, I like the iPhone XR, I like the Note 9, I am a Pixel 2 user, but none of the versions of the OnePlus 6T is like 50 to 60% as good as those other devices. They're just not. In fact, none of those other phones are objectively better than the 6T in anything. And that in and of itself is already a feat for OnePlus that I think should be commended. They deserve applause for that. So if you are one of the many, apparently, that keep complaining the OnePlus 6T doesn't have a bunch of features and it's not the best phone across the board and that's why it costs so much less than the others, well, first you need to get that sentence straight because the only thing where you can objectively point and say, this, yeah, that phone's better in this category is the camera. And that's just because the 6T is like 95% of the way there and the only camera above it, in my opinion, is the Pixel 3. Maybe the Mate 20 Pro is up there before the Pixel 3, but I didn't test the Mate 20 Pro, so I'm not gonna count it in here. And secondly, unless you are using a Note 9, any other phone you have in your pocket is also not gonna have all the features that you're complaining that the 6T doesn't have. It's gonna fault on one or all of those categories. So quit your whining already, will you? For everybody else, the 6T is an amazing value for money. The absolute best value for money on an Android phone that you can get, actually on a phone that you can get right now. For what it delivers, performance, the battery, Oxygen OS, the experience, the freshness, how quick and snappy it is, and everything we talked about, the 6T is an amazing choice. So if you've been on the fence about maybe getting it or not, because you're not sure about OnePlus for, as a brand, for example, I'd wager that it would be beneficial for you to try it out. Give OnePlus the benefit of the doubt and try the 6D or the 7 when it comes next year, well, this year actually, you are probably gonna see the same thing we all did. All the people that try OnePlus devices are usually a bit spoiled and it's really, really hard to turn back. Oh, uh, but if you are a OnePlus 6 owner, I'd also not upgrade to the 6T, wait for the 7 or the 8, because despite some physical changes with the notch and the fingerprint sensor under the display, everything else about the 6T is like a reskin of the 6. So I'd keep your 6 until the next cycle. But if your 6 breaks, definitely don't even, you're probably already thinking about that. Yeah, if this breaks or I want to give it to someone else, I'm going to get a 6T. And you're right, you should. And that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual. If you feel like it, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified of the many, many new stuff we're going to be posting on 2019. This is going to be a year to remember. Awesome. I can feel it already. Oh, and don't forget to check out my review on the HD 5.8X Jubilees. You can find the card there or there or somewhere in here. Plus, there's still time to enter the giveaway. So yeah, I just gave it away that there's a giveaway going on. Go check it out right there. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.